Might some of us believe the Vatican did not reveal the entire secret? Malachi Martin, a priest who witnessed the undisclosed contents of the third secret of Fatima, has now decided to reveal everything he knows about the secret that has been stored in the Vatican archives. Martin believed that the third secret of Fatima had implications far beyond what the Vatican revealed. Do you think the Vatican has truly revealed the entire third secret? Or is there still something hidden that we will never know? Is there really a missing text of the third secret? The evidence points to only one conclusion, that something has to be missing. In case the Vatican truly wants to hide a part of the Fatima secret, could it be because the entire secret actually contains a terrifying conspiracy that could shake the world? Or is there another reason? Join us in this video as we try to uncover the truth behind the real reason why part of the third secret of Fatima has not been fully revealed. Let's listen to the truth from a priest who read the third secret of Fatima intact. First, a little background. In 1917, Our Lady appeared to three children in Fatima, Portugal. Among various messages and miracles, she gave the children a secret that was good for some and bad for others. Though two of the children died a few years later, the third, Lucia Santos, lived a long life as a Carmelite nun. In 1941, Lucia revealed in a memoir that the secret had three parts. Though she published the first two secrets, she chose not to disclose the third secret. Instead, she wrote it down and gave it to her local bishop. She asked him to deliver it to the Pope and ensure that the secret was revealed publicly by 1960. The secret was delivered to Rome in 1957, but in 1960, the Vatican decided to not release it, saying it was most probable the secret would remain forever under absolute seal. After decades of speculation and controversy, including someone hijacking a plane in 1981 and demanding that Pope John Paul II release the secret, the Vatican finally released the third secret in 2000. The secret described an apocalyptic scene, including an apparent prediction of the assassination attempt of John Paul II and exhorted people to penance. And that's when the controversy really got going. Third secret is still secret. Over years after the Vatican divulged one of the church's best kept secrets, the third part of Fatima's message, many people are still not satisfied with that explanation. They suspect that the Vatican is still hiding a piece needed to complete the true secret. Many people, including Italian journalist Antonio Socchi, accused the Vatican of not releasing the full text of the secret, citing various inconsistencies between what was released and what had been said previously about the secret. Most importantly, a rumor surfaced that Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger, also the future Pope Benedict XVI, had privately confessed to his friend Father Ingo Dollinger that the Vatican had withheld a section that warned of a bad council and a bad mass. Combined with the fact that Lucia had asked for the secret to be released by 1960, this seemed to be a reference to the Second Vatican Council and the subsequent liturgical reforms that remain controversial for many traditionalists. The evidence points to only one conclusion, that something has to be missing said Christopher Ferrara, a U.S. attorney and Catholic commentator who spoke at the conference. Ferrara pointed to what he described as a series of incongruities and inconsistencies in the Vatican's version. Among people truly familiar with the events at Fatima, he said, only a minority clings steadfastly to the notion that an ambiguous vision of a bishop dressed in white outside a half-ruined city is all there is to the third secret. Some argue that the third secret of Fatima was a prophecy so traumatic and dire that several popes decided not to make it known to the faithful, and yet the text published in 2000 contained little more than an allegory about the Church's past struggles with 20th century ideologies. They say there's good reason to believe the third secret wasn't just about the Church battling outside forces, but about Satan working in the Church at the highest levels. Some have deduced that the secret foresaw the changes of the Second Vatican Council, especially in liturgy and ecumenical dialogue, 
as part of the great apostasy that church leaders refuse to acknowledge. Sounds so scary, right? It is very likely that the third secret of Fatima does not merely refer to the Pope in white, who was later believed to be Pope John Paul II fulfilling the prophecy, but points to a broader picture, which is the crisis of faith and pastoral negligence prophesied. Russia will play a role. Before Father Malachi Martin's death in 1999, he gave a series of interviews both to Art Bell and Bernard Jansen. In these interviews, the subject of the third secret often came up. Although Martin would not reveal its contents directly, he would discuss it in a general sense. Something of interest to today's situation, Martin said, is that the message of Fatima centered around not only Russia, which is to be expected, but Ukraine and in particular Kiev as well. Most shockingly, one listener told Martin that they had heard from a priest who had claimed to have read the third secret that the last pope would be under the control of Satan. When Pope John XIII read this, he fainted, thinking it was him, to which Martin replied, Yes, it sounds as if they were reading the text of the third secret. Um, it is getting interesting. But you know what is more interesting? Some years ago, Martin had already made as full disclosure of the third secret as he ever would to the reading public in his 1990 book, The Keys of This Blood. That's why people believe he held in his hands the text of the third secret a little while after Pope John read it prematurely and before he ought in 1959. In the pages of The Keys of This Blood, Martin didn't hold back when he wrote, Lucia's single-page written formulation of the third secret covers three main topics, a physical chastisement of the nations involving catastrophes, man-made or natural, on land, on water, and in the atmosphere of the globe, a spiritual chastisement far more frightening and distressing, especially for Roman Catholics, than physical hardship, since it would consist of the disappearance of religious belief, a period of widespread unfaith in many countries. In tandem with the man-made or natural catastrophes and the punishment of spirit visited particularly upon Catholics, Martin said that both these were intrinsic to the third topic, the pivotal role of Russia. In fact, the physical and spiritual chastisements, according to Lucia's letter, are to be gridded on a fateful timetable in which Russia is the ratchet. Then Martin, in this best-selling book, did not sweeten the secret. The chastisements were meant to punish the nations for their ungodliness and abandonment of God's laws. But he allowed for the hope that still existed in 1960. The whole dire process could be averted, need not happen, if two requests of Mary were granted. One, that whoever would be Pope in 1960 should publish the text of the third secret for the whole world to read and know. Two, that then the Pope, with all his bishops acting collegially, should consecrate Russia to Mary. Repeatedly, Martin stressed that Russia, according to the text of the Third Secret, was the regulator or the timetable. If these two basic requests were satisfied, then the two chastisements, physical and spiritual, would not be inflicted on mankind. Russia would be converted to religious belief, and a period of great peace and prosperity would ensue. Neither of these conditions were met during the time of John Betty Thurn, and Martin lamented that the collegial consecration of Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary was not done in October 1962, when 2,500 bishops assembled at the Vatican to open the Second Vatican Council. Martin drew on an answer that Pope John Paul II gave as to why the popes who came before him did not deign to publish the secret or obey the request concerning Russia. My predecessors in the Petrine office, John XXIII, Paul VI, John Paul I, diplomatically preferred to postpone publication so as not to encourage the world power of communism to make certain moves. On March 25, 1984, Pope John Paul II held a ceremony to perform a consecration to Mary's Immaculate Heart, but at the last moment decided not to name Russia after all. Before try to find that answer, please note this. In our own era, 
Our Lady of Fatima promised peace through her intercession. If my requests, Pope and all bishops consecrate Russia to her immaculate heart, five Saturday devotion promulgated, are heeded, Russia will be converted, and there will be peace. If not, she, which means Russia will spread her errors throughout the world, causing wars and persecution of the church. The good will be martyred, the Holy Father will have much to suffer, and various nations will be annihilated. When Sister Lucy asked our Lord in 1936 why he would not convert Russia, why he would not bring about peace without the specific consecration of Russia, our Lord said, because I want my whole church to recognize that consecration as a triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, so that my church will place devotion to the Immaculate Heart beside devotion to my Sacred Heart. And so we return to March 25, 1984, and Pope St. John Paul II, according to the late great Father Gabriel Amorth. In 1984, the Pope quite timidly attempted to consecrate Russia in St. Peter's Square. I was there just a few feet away from him because I was the organizer of the event. He attempted the consecration, but all around him were some politicians who told him, you can't name Russia, you can't. And he asked again, can I name it? And they said, no, no, no. Father Malachi Martin also confirmed that the consecration of Russia had been sabotaged by Freemasonic globalists among the cardinals and bishops themselves. Does mystery still remain? Dollinger and Pope Benedict XVI, Holy See Press Office issued a response that Pope Benedict XVI declares never to have spoken with Professor Dollinger about Fatima, clearly affirming that the remarks attributed to Professor Dollinger on the matter are pure inventions, absolutely untrue. And he confirms decisively that the publication of the third secret of Fatima is complete. And Cardinal Tarsicio Bertone has said one of the reasons the third secret was made public in 2000 was that people were spreading absurd theses about catastrophic events or heresy at the top levels of the church. Cardinal Bertone, who was personally involved in the publication of the third secret, said he was puzzled that some still think the Vatican is hiding something. In 2006, an Italian journalist wrote a book titled the Fourth Secret of Fatima, that laid out a Vatican conspiracy theory, prompting a new round of publicity. In 2007, Cardinal Bertone wrote his own book, The Last Visionary of Fatima, which reiterated the official version of the Fatima messages and secrets, and was based, he said, on long conversations with Carmelite sister Lucia dos Santos, the last of the visionaries to die. In TV appearances, the Cardinal strongly denied theories of a Vatican cover-up. Pope Benedict was also personally involved in publishing the Third Secret. Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger, the Vatican's top doctrinal official, presented the text of the secret to the press and wrote a lengthy commentary about it. That news conference on June 26, 2000 is still memorable for Vatican journalists. The stage was set for the disclosure of a text that for decades was thought to be too disturbing to reveal. But instead, Cardinal Ratzinger began by deflating expectations and announcing that there was nothing apocalyptic. No great mystery is revealed, nor is the future unveiled, he said. He went on to give a theological framework to the apparitions and messages of Fatima, insisting that in the church's tradition, prophecy is not like a film preview, but more like offering signs that can be useful for Christians. Cardinal Ratzinger said that was how to understand the third secret's vision of a bishop in white who struggles up a hill amid corpses of slain martyrs and then falls dead after being shot by soldiers. Whether this bishop symbolized Pope John Paul II, who was shot and wounded on May 13, 1981. Father Nicholas Gruner, a Canadian priest who founded the Fatima Crusader magazine, has long maintained that Russia has yet to be consecrated to Mary, following the instructions of Our Lady of Fatima. Father Gruner said, We haven't had the conversion of Russia by any stretch of the imagination, not militarily, not morally. It's the largest abortion capital of the world. There's just no sign of conversion in any sense. That's another issue the Vatican is tired of dealing with.
Church officials say Pope John Paul II in 1984 led the world's bishops in the consecration of Russia and the world. The late Sister Lucia, one of the three Portuguese children who saw Mary in 1917 and the one who received the instructions for the consecration, had said that it was properly performed. So case closed. Speculation is rampant about Fatima's final secret. When Sister Maria Lucia, the last living Fatima visionary, died on February 13, speculation sparked anew about the details of the third secret of Fatima entrusted to her in 1917 by an apparition that the Catholic Church recognizes as the Virgin Mary. Despite assurances by the cloistered Carmelite nun that she had revealed all she witnessed in the Marian apparitions in three separate messages, a cottage industry has sprouted in print and now over the internet, driven by speculation that the entirety of the third secret has been withheld. Religious and laypeople alike speculate that the Vatican has engineered an elaborate cover-up to withhold part of the final message, fearing its release would cause panic among the world's billion Catholics. Two weeks after Sister Lucia's passing, the long fomenting interest in Fatima's last secret is taking on the mysterious cast of the best-selling novel, The Da Vinci Code, Dark Secrets Hidden Behind Vatican Walls, an assassination attempt on the Pope Ernest explanations by high-ranking ecclesiastical authorities, Satan and a humble Catholic nun trying to keep faith with the Mother of God. The irony of the controversy is the same today as it always has been. The Blessed Mother made quiet requests that could have thunderous effects worldwide far more dramatic than the wildest speculation about the message's contents. At the heart of all three messages are the following instructions from the Virgin Mary Conversion of Sinners, Penance, Seek Salvation, Pray, the Rosary, Make the Communion of Reparation on five consecutive First Saturdays, and Create Worldwide Devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. The reward for following the Lady's wishes, peace, the punishment for not following her wishes, Satan gets stronger. Some of the faithful believe the devil is already present in the Catholic Church. They cite a comment attributed to Pope Paul VI in which he supposedly saw the devil's smoke paws and tail in the church. The third secret is Sister Lucia's recollection of a vision in which she first sees Our Lady of the Rosary, accompanied by an angel carrying a flaming sword and crying out, Penance, penance, penance. But the lady prevents the flames from scorching the ground. Lucia also wrote about seeing an unidentified cleric in white whom she interpreted as a pope leading bishops religious and the faithful up a hill to a huge wooden cross where waiting soldiers killed the pope and the others with guns and arrows. Sister Lucia described two angels standing on either side of the cross collecting the blood of those martyrs to sprinkle it on the remaining living faithful. Sister Lucia also wrote about seeing the Pope walking through a partially destroyed city in great distress, blessing the dead. John Paul II asked to read the third message while he was in the hospital, recovering from his gunshot wound. He was convinced that Mary guided the bullet in a direction that spared his life. The lady told the three children at Fatima, that the Pope in the vision would have much to suffer. Supporters of the interpretation that Pope John Paul II is the Pope in the vision point to the pontiff's health history. This Pope suffers from Parkinson's disease, has undergone surgeries to remove a tumor and his appendix to replace a hip and repair a shoulder. He has broken his leg and sustained other injuries. But after all, the principal message is to repent for our sins, do penance in reparation for our sins, and to pray for sinners who have no one to pray for them. The Hermeneutic of Conspiracy Kevin J. Simmons is the author of the published on the third part of The Secret of Fatima, which offers a scholarly challenge to those who claim the existence of a yet unrevealed text of the third part of The Secret of Fatima, given to Senior Lucia by the Blessed Virgin Mary in 1917. In an interview, he also reveals the existence of a heretofore unknown letter from Senior Lucia to Pope Paul VI regarding a diabolical revolt against the Church 
that seems to refer to themes from both the second and third parts of The Secret. He revealed in 2013 the Carmelites of the convent of St. Teresa in Coimbra, Portugal, where Senior Lucia lived for 57 years, published a biography on her entitled Um Caminho Sobo Olhar de Maria, which means a pathway under the gaze of Mary. They revealed a previously unknown command of Our Lady to Senior Lucia from January 3, 1944, that she was to write what her superiors command you, but not that which is given to you to understand of its meaning. Apparently, there was some prophetic insight into the third part that had been given to Sainter Lucia by 1944, but which she was not allowed to communicate to others. This fact could account for why the text seemed incomplete to some people. He continued, We must accept the logical consequences of this command, the most obvious one being the impossibility of Sainter Lucia giving an accompanying explanation to the third part of the secret when she wrote it down in 1944. Other primary source documents available in 2000 told us how reluctant Senior Lucia was to speak of her mystical experiences. There was also the simple fact that prior to 2013, we possessed no document from her describing the apparition from January 1944. We knew the fact of the apparition, but not its details, Thus, caution was necessary before presuming anything. Again, what is circumstantial might have an alternative explanation. That's why some argued that the Holy See was covering up a second text of the third part of the secret. Such arguments made for sensational propaganda of scandal and Vatican intrigue, real cloak-and-dagger stuff, that played upon the sympathies of Catholics concerned for the state of the Church. There is at least one that is already public knowledge, namely Senior Lucia's January 9, 1944, letter to Bishop José de Silva. In June, Siemens visited the Senior Lucia Museum in Coimbra, which is overseen by the Carmelites of Coimbra, Senior Lucia's convent. On display was the first page of an unpublished and undated letter of Senior Lucia to Pope Paul VI. She wrote him a beautiful, encouraging letter that was similar to one that St. Pio of Pietrelcina wrote to the Holy Father in September 1968. In her letter, Senior Lucia spoke about a diabolical revolt that was being promoted by the powers of darkness, with errors being made against God, His Church, her doctrines and dogmas. She said the Church was going through an agony in Gethsemane, and that there was a worldwide disorientation that is martyring the church. She wrote to encourage Paul VI as the vicar of Christ on earth and to tell him of her and others' steadfastness to him, to Christ and his church, in the midst of the revolt. Perhaps I am biased, having studied the third part of the secret, but I was struck by how similar Senior Lucia's discourse appeared to the second and third parts. Sainter Lucia's discussion on the Church's agony in Gethsemane and its martyrdom by a worldwide disorientation seemed similar to the third part of The Secret, which portrays a global martyrdom of the Church while making its way to a cross. What causes this martyrdom? In the second part of The Secret, Our Lady warned about the spread of Russia's errors. Those errors caused exactly what Our Lady predicted. Wars, persecutions of the Church, and suffering for the Holy Father. In June 1958, Senior Lucia wrote to Pope Pius XV and told him that communism would reach its zenith in the 1960s. Therefore, those who are faithful to Jesus Christ in the midst of the revolt undergo martyrdom. Pope John Paul II gives us the key. You know, the third secret concerns the infallible definitions of the faith and that definitions, by their very nature, have to say what the truth is, and therefore, by strict logical implication, what the error is, and that the error is condemned. If a person stubbornly holds on to a condemned error after he has been informed of the infallible truth, then he cannot be saved, unless he repents before he dies. And so, it is our duty to witness to the truths of our faith and to protect the little ones from errors against the faith by defending the faith in public. 
That's why the church anathematizes those errors and those clergy and laity who stubbornly hold on to them. We know what the third secret is because Pope John Paul II has revealed to us what it is. Pope John Paul II warned us in May 2000 about the dangers to the faith in our day by citing in his sermon, which predicted that one-third of the stars of heaven would be taken down to earth by the tail of the dragon, and the Pope indicates to us that the danger is now. Catholic commentaries have traditionally interpreted this passage as referring to one-third of the clergy as undermining both the Catholic faith and the salvation of souls by working for the devil. And we also know from other reliable sources, including Cardinal Ratzinger, when he said the third secret refers to the dangers threatening the faith and life of the Christian and therefore the life of the world. We also know it from Father Malachi Martin, as I told above. When Our Lady said, in Portugal, the dogma of the faith will always be preserved, what do you think it means? It means that the dogma of the faith will not be preserved in various or many other parts of the world because the clergy and faithful are not adhering to the solemn definitions. The third secret concerns the undermining of the Catholic faith throughout Europe and possibly throughout much of the world. If the people adhered to the infallible definitions, they would retain the faith. To safeguard your Catholic faith, you need your own efforts to live a good Catholic life and to read solid Catholic material, to avoid bad books, magazines, TV programs, and to avoid also people who undermine your Catholic faith, but you also need grace. To obtain this grace, you must pray, especially the daily rosary. To avoid being confused, do not follow the false shepherds and the heretics who claim to speak to a deeper understanding of the gospel. If they followed the infallible definitions of the dogmas of the faith, the faithful would judge everything according to what is right and what is wrong, in the light of the gospel and of the infallible definitions that explain the gospel. They would know if something were of the faith or not, and they would know when the other person speaking was in error, no matter what their position and stature in the church was. And they would be able to determine what is wrong, what is against the faith, because the definitions are infallible. That is, they cannot fail. A pope can fail at times. At times, an ecumenical council can fail. A cardinal, a bishop, a priest, or a layperson can fail. But the solemn definitions of the pope alone, or the pope, together with an ecumenical council, can never fail. This is what Our Lady of Fatima came to warn us about and to tell us what to do to preserve our own souls, and to preserve as many souls of the people around us as we can. And this is what the third secret is about in a few words, and we're on solid ground. The question now is, what can we do about it to save our souls? As I said before, pray the rosary daily and learn the dogmas of the Catholic faith, especially the infallible definitions.